and doing little things as though they were the greatest things in the world. That the little things of life are of primary importance is a truth not generally understood, and the thought that little things can be neglected, thrown aside, or slurred over is at the root of that lack of thoroughness which is so common and which results in imperfect work and unhappy lives. When one understands that the great things of the world and of life consist of a combination of small things, and that without this aggregation of small things the great things would be non-existent, then he begins to pay careful attention to those things which he formerly regarded as insignificant. He thus acquires the quality of thoroughness and becomes a man of usefulness and influence, for the possession or non-possession of this one quality may mean all the difference between a life of peace and power and one of misery and weakness. Every employer of labor knows how comparatively rare this quality is, how difficult it is to find men and women who will put thought and energy into their work and do it completely and satisfactorily. Bad workmanship abounds. Skill and excellence are acquired by few. Thoughtlessness, carelessness, and laziness are such common vices that it should cease to appear strange that in spite of social reform the ranks of the unemployed should continue to swell, for those who scamp their work today will another day, in the hour of deep necessity, look and ask for work in vain. The law of survival of the fittest is not based on cruelty, it is based on justice. It is one aspect of that divine equity which everywhere prevails. Vice is beaten with many stripes. If it were not so, how could virtue be developed? The thoughtless and lazy cannot take precedence of, or stand equally with, the thoughtful and industrious. A friend of mine tells me that his father gave all his children the following piece of advice. Whatever your future work may be, put your whole mind upon it and do it thoroughly. You need then have no fear as to your welfare, for there are so many who are careless and negligent that the service of the thorough man are always in demand. I know those who have, for years, tried in almost vain to secure competent workmanship in spheres which do not require exceptional skill, but which call chiefly for forethought, energy, and conscientious care. They have discharged one after another for negligence, laziness, incompetence, and persistent breaches of duty, not to mention other vices which have no bearing on this subject, 